Hey everyone, Wyatt here from Winnipeg Historical Fencing Club. So this is the 11th play of the play of the two-handed sword between two bucklers, and this one's quite uh, quite something. So it goes, the 11th lesson and the third taking up is with a spring with that on hand right up onto the visage with a half round broken into a stop with a reverence to the cross of thy hilt with a long carter stroke spent and flat down by the back the double broken spring back the foot of drawing and in with a long rake double in with the foot walking and on each foot two rakes and at the allure's end smite in four rakes double borne into a stop and so the other rakes into the allure's end and double that on into a stop again turning in with a long double rake with a stop and with that other hand spring up thy sword to thy right shoulder and smite thy stroke aventures with a hawk setting down thy sword by thy foot so the lesson starts off by saying this is the third taking up this is also the last one in the play of the two-handed sword between two bucklers it's also the last lesson of the play of the two-handed sword between two bucklers so with taking up we're going to start with a point on the ground uh, and continuing off our lesson 10 where we finished with the point on the ground with the left hand on the sword our next line is with a spring with that on hand right up onto the visage. So if our on hand at this point is the left hand, it makes sense to do uh, a spring, so a single handed thrust with the left hand and uh, the little step forward with the left foot just to get that reach. And we're basically aiming for a face level target. with a half round broken. So our regular rounds are full 360 degree cuts that cut from one side of the head to the other. My half rounds still cut from one side of the head to the other, but they're not making a full circle when they do the cut. They're only making about a half circle. And if the broken aspect, essentially this is, to me this implies that it's being stopped or, or parried. into a stop with reverence to the cross of thy hilt. A lot of people interpret stop as being an actual stop or a parry. I find the context fits a little better for the word step. And if you work from Harleen, you'll know that a lot of the words are spelt with like wrong letters in the place all the time. And uh, that could just be how they did stop the word step back then as well. It's, it's hard to know. It's an old manuscript. So I'm gonna go in with a step with a reverence to the cross of thy hilt. So reverence can mean, uh, you know, respect, honor. So it could have a potential religious meaning, like we see, like an Envadi uh, has a very religious meaning with the, the making a cross of his sword, also like the crossing of the blades. Uh, or it could mean that you're using your cross in the next action that you're doing. And I've seen uh, interpretations of that, and it's a very neat, uh, very neat action. I'll show it here. But as I have this as a solo drill, I'm gonna pay respect to the cross. I'm gonna come, come in a posta frontale kind of position. And uh, however we do this, either way, we can perform the next action from here. So we have with a long carter stroke, smet and flat down by the back. So a carter stroke could be a misspelling of quarter or it could be its own thing. I'm treating it as, as a quarter because it's plausible enough as many words are misspelt in Harleian. Uh, and then we have the smetten flat down by the back. That's a bit odd, but when you do a quarter and you make it a, a long quarter or, or a larger action, uh, the best way to do this is making it a, you know, a bigger action, which tends to kind of bring the sword around your back. So it kind of fits the text somewhat there. with a double broken spring, back the foot of drawing. So we're gonna do two springs, two of those single-handed thrusts. And when we're doing these actions, we're gonna pass back with a step. And in with a long rake double. So rakes can be up or down. But as they're not specified, I will do them as rising cuts, which is how I typically teach them in my system. And this seems a lot more prevalent in the doll as well. Uh, so you're going to go in with a step, 
with two large rakes, so two large rising cuts. We make big motions with them, full extensions. Uh, after that, we have in with the foot walking on an each foot two rakes. So it's not specifying how many steps we're taking, and then they're also not long rakes. So basically, we're just doing more passing steps with probably tighter cuts of rakes, not full extension, but, but just a little bit uh, of a tighter cut with these rakes. And then we have, and at the allure's end, smite in four rakes, double borne into a stop. So the allure is either uh, means a passage, or it could mean to like entice or attract. Uh, though the passage is probably more likely in the spelling and time period, where in Middle English it comes from the French word uh, alloir, which eventually turns into the word uh, French word aller. Uh, so if we take it as at the passage's end, smite in four rakes, double born into a stop. The question is, is this telling us to cut four more doubles, which would be eight more cuts in total? Uh, or is it telling us that the total number of rakes in the passage is just four doubles, so only eight in total rather than who knows how many? And that one makes a little more sense because otherwise we start getting an obscene amount of rakes. We for sure know we have to cut eight rakes or four doubles which is still a lot and likely not something you want to do in a sparring situation but uh, for a solo drill this seems to work just fine in this context and so the other rakes into the allure's end and double that on into a stop so this area is very confusing it's hard to know what rakes it is referring to if it's the first rakes then that makes it eight rakes in the passage with the next two rakes in, in the, the line being uh, separate or else we include these next two rakes in the passage, which would make the whole lesson eight rakes in total. Uh, and then we also have the double that on into a stop, meaning uh, a double rake with a step being applied to the, the other rakes, whichever ones those are. Which if this, in the, this case, if it's any of the long rakes, uh, it doesn't make sense because we already have them as doubles with a step. So it kind of seems irrelevant or redundant. So, the next line we have is, again, turning in with a long rake double with a stop. So either this is a part of the allure, saying we're entering into the allures, uh, saying enter the allure with two long rakes, then we do our four uh, regular rakes, and we finish with the two long rakes, uh, again here, making eight doubles, or it's done after the allure. So maybe we do the two long rakes, we do six regular, that's our allure's end, and then we do these now, now we do these two long rakes. Uh, hard to know. Uh, the again either refers to the first two rakes, saying you're, you're repeating those same two rakes, or it could be reiterating that maybe even the first rakes are done this way. So maybe the whole thing is saying like that the other rakes are, you know, the first two rakes. Remember those ones? They're the ones that you, you did a double and a step, you know, they're, they're uh, again, you're turning in with those long rake double with a step so it could just be like repeating itself saying remember those rakes but that kind of doesn't make much sense either just a thought but so I mean that these last two rakes these last two long rakes you wouldn't even do those ones those would be the ones you, the first two rakes you do but again we're just kind of just making up assumptions here and it's a little a little crazy so it's probably better to just treat these ones as, as not the first two and as, as their own two separate rakes. So then we also have the turning in aspect and the question of what's turning. So, so this whole passage here gives us a lot of questions on what it means. I don't have much confidence in being right about it, uh, but I do know we do a lot of rakes. That's the one thing it tells us. So to break it down to what I'm doing uh, from my interpretation, I'm going to go with the two long rakes with a step. I'm going to do three double rakes each with a step. So uh, that'll be my uh, four rakes double born. And that's going to make my first two long rakes. Those are going to be my other rakes in the passage here. So that brings me to the allure's end. And then I'm going to treat the last two rakes as separately. And I'm going to do, do those ones with the turn of the body. I'm going to do a 180 degree turn uh, and a step with those ones.
and with that other hand spring up thy sword to thy right shoulder. So here we're just placing the sword on the right shoulder and that other hand, which I take to mean the left hand, is doing the work. So from the fenestra ox position we finish in, we're just going to push the pommel to spring the sword to our shoulder. And smite thy stroke avanters with a hawk setting down the sword by the foot. So we're right foot forward, uh, sword on the right shoulder, our stroke avanters is done with the volta stabile, our back turning to the enemy, and our sword's going to go around behind us, cut down from left to right, and then from there we're just going to do a, a regular hawk from right to left, and this ends us in a nice position to just place the sword, or the tip of the sword on the ground, uh, finishing the lesson. So now we put it all together. And that's my interpretation of the 11th lesson. It's a bit uh, it's a bit crazy, it's a really hard one to do. Uh, I've never really had confidence in getting this one right. Uh, but it's something out there, you know, maybe get people thinking a bit about it. Uh, if you have your interpretation, please feel free to share and comment. I'd love to see it, especially with uh, what we're doing with the Allure Zen and all those rakes there. Uh, if not, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.